Penny Ghent is a fell located in the Yorkshire Dales, England. Made of shale, sandstone, limestone and millstone grit, the fell is 2,277 feet or 694 metres tall. The name Penny Ghent is an example of a pre-Anglo-Saxon name, although its meaning is unclear. Pen is the Brythonic and modern Welsh word for top or head. Ghent is traditionally translated as hill of the winds, but today hill on the border is more accepted. Close to Penny Ghent lies the village of Horton in Ribblesdale. In September 2007, around 50 people, including journalists and detectives, attended a funeral at the church in the village. After a non-denominational service was held, a coffin was buried in a corner of the graveyard in a plot donated by the Horton in Ribblesdale Parish Council. The deceased wasn't a well-known member of the local community. None of the deceased's family members were present at the funeral. The coffin's brass plaque read, Unknown Female. A well-known walking route links Horton in Ribblesdale to Penny Ghent. On the 20th of September 2004, a group of hikers were making their way from Penny Ghent to the village when they decided to take a break. They stopped by a stream that flows into Selgill Holes, an entrance to a cave system. The hikers' plan to continue their walk was soon interrupted, however. Close to the entrance of the caves lay a body. The female body lay in the stream. Believed to be from Southeast Asia, the woman was estimated to be between the ages of 25 and 35, stood 4 foot 11 inches tall and weighed 10 stones or 140 pounds. Her shoulder length hair was dark and she had brown eyes. She had an obvious gap in her lower front teeth, something that would have been noticeable when she smiled, and her ears had been pierced, although no earrings were present. The woman wasn't wearing any walking gear and her footwear was missing. Although one source said that she was semi-naked due to torn clothing, a list of the clothes she wore has been made available. The woman wore light-coloured socks, a white bra and size 10 to 12 black underwear. The jeans she wore were green, size 12 and from Marks and Spencers. Her horizontally striped t-shirt was size 10 to 12 and either green and white or turquoise and white. A gold ring was found on the third finger of her left hand. Some sources have referred to the band as a wedding ring. It was determined to be 22 karat gold, 4 millimetres wide and a woman's size L. It has been described as well worn and was found to be made in Bangkok. It is not known how the Penny Ghent Jane Doe ended up in the stream. Theories from internet sleuths range from her body being dumped there to her simply slipping and falling. Others think she may have ended up near Selgill Holes after being washed down the stream. As the police investigation began, detectives decided to treat the woman's death as unexplained rather than suspicious, as there was no sign of a traumatic death or assault. Her post-mortem was unable to determine a cause of death, although it did rule out the possibility that she drowned. She is believed to have died between the 31st of August and the 13th of September 2004. Even though exactly how she died hasn't been found, the post-mortem did determine several things about the woman's well-being. She is thought to have been a non-smoker, and evidence of toothbrush use indicates that she was right-handed. She didn't have any fillings, and the fact that her teeth were in good condition suggested that she had a non-decay promoting diet. It's likely that a childhood disease, like measles, affected her growth. The woman had been pregnant in the past and she had a coil fitted. The fact that she had a coil has led some armchair detectives to question how much access women have to the coil in Southeast Asia. This has led to theories that she may have been a sex worker with the possibility that she was trafficked to the UK.
After the discovery of the body, two square miles surrounding the place where the woman was found was searched. The nearby cave system was searched four times, including sections that are only accessible by experienced cave divers. In the early stages of the investigation, walkers were questioned and sightings of women in the area since the 1st of August 2004 that matched the deceased's description were looked into. One man was hiking in the area with his son-in-law when a woman matching the Jane Doe's description approached him. The woman asked for directions to Penny Ghent. She didn't seem distressed. House-to-house -house inquiries were made and witness appeal leaflets in many languages were sent to local holiday accommodations and missing persons records were looked at. When the initial investigation didn't produce any leads, the police looked at other ways to determine the woman's identity. The police worked with foreign embassies and made an appeal on the BBC programme Crime Watch. The National Missing Persons Helpline produced an image of the woman. The Penny Ghent Jane Doe remains unidentified and an inquest into her death recorded an open verdict. The police have revealed that they believe the woman had been living in the UK for at least two years, with her likely residing in Lancashire, Cumbria or the western part of the Yorkshire Dales. It's possible that people who knew her in the UK may have been told that she'd returned home around the time she died. In 2018, the North Yorkshire Police launched an appeal on Facebook. The appeal has been written in English, Thai and Filipino. It's hoped that the appeal will be shared in the UK and abroad. A community group has been created and the police want people with ties to Southeast Asia to join. In 2012, Horton in Ribblesdale residents raised money for a memorial plaque to be placed on the Jane Doe's grave. The residents wanted her grave to have a marker in case her family is ever found. When one of the people involved in the investigation, Detective Inspector Pete Martin, was asked about the Penny Ghent Jane Doe, he said, The investigation has gone from the Yorkshire Dales to halfway round the world, and we have learned so much about this lady, and yet we still cannot tell how she came to be upon the hillside, how she met her end, and, most poignant of all, just who she was.